Hello, my name is Zimiti Chodeva, and welcome to PwC's Boardroom Forum Live, focused on ESG as a value creator for assurance. More and more stakeholders are interested in an organization's ESG journey, and sustainability reporting has quickly become a matter of global importance. The reliability of such reporting is a key issue for many stakeholders, in particular investors and other users of an entity's general purpose external reporting, regulators, and non-governmental organizations, NGOs. Stakeholders are increasingly demanding assurance on sustainability reporting, and mandatory assurance requirements have been promulgated or proposed across many jurisdictions. To talk to us a bit more about it today, we have Jamil Essop, who is a director in PwC's assurance practice focused on ESG reporting. Welcome, Jamil. Jamil, Thousands of companies around the world are incorporating ESG metrics into their business strategy in an effort to become more sustainable on several fronts and attract investors. In an effort to do this, organizations need to measure and report on their ESG efforts. But the quality and assurance of that reporting is key. Tell us why. Dimitri, thank you. Great question. Assurance over sustainability reporting is critical for building trust with stakeholders. As you've, as you've noted, more and more stakeholders are interested in, in, in an organization's ESG journey. And sustainability reporting has certainly become a matter of global importance. Employees want to work for companies that share their values. Analysts, rating agencies, and uh, regulators alike are relying more and more on non-financial ESG metrics. And investors also recognize that sustainable investments offer far greater opportunities than unsustainable ones. So a big question that, uh, that uh, all stakeholders have is, can I trust this information? And without trust, uh, credibility is lost and reputations can be threatened. A second key uh, aspect to this is uh, to allow companies uh, you know, better transparency with regards to the ESG reporting. We are very familiar with you know, stakeholders actually demanding information that is meaningful to them. We have all seen what AGMs have been like in the South African context over the last few years with uh, investor activists and stakeholders demanding uh, information. And when companies publish clear, robust reporting that has been independently assured, they are certainly responding to this demand. So transparency and trust actually go hand in hand. It absolutely, like. absolutely. Yeah. And when you refer to assurance, what does that practically mean? And what are you seeing out in the marketplace? Zimiti, assurance in simple terms is really about enhancing the de degree of confidence in the reported information. And in the ESG context, this is either a limited assurance engagement or a reasonable assurance engagement. In a limited assurance engagement, the practitioner gathers sufficient appropriate evidence about whether the reported subject matter information is plausible in the circumstance and gives a report in the form of negative assurance. That is, nothing has come to the practitioner's attention that causes him to believe that the subject matter is inappropriate. Whereas in a reasonable assurance engagement, the practitioner gathers sufficient appropriate evidence to conclude that the subject matter is free from material misstatement and actually gives a, opinion, a positive assurance as opposed to the negative assurance. And the level of uh, work that's required for reasonable assurance is akin to a financial statement audit. So it's a lot more than a limited assurance engagement. In the South African context, you know, most companies have actually really had limited assurance on certain uh, of their key performance indicators. And uh, you know, in the broader JSC context, circa 20% of companies have had some level of assurance over the ESG uh, metrics. And perhaps the reason for this is that sustainability reporting and assurance has not been mandated uh, as yet uh, from, from a South African perspective. We've seen in, on the global platform that the US Securities Exchange Commission, as well as the European Financial Reporting Advisory Group, having mandated assurance requirements for, for, the, uh, for certain companies that will have to comply with that regulation. And starting with uh, limited assurance uh, as early as 2024, so the landscape is quickly changing and companies need to start on this journey and not wait for regulation to come into effect uh, before starting, starting on, their, on their journey. 
I'm reminded of uh, our 2021 Global Investor Survey, where it was noted that 73% of investors think companies should have the same level of assurance on the ESG uh, metrics as a financial statement, uh, and that is reasonable assurance. And 70% of companies um, should, they also noted that 70% of companies should have uh, all of their material ESG matters assured, as opposed to a subset of, of the information that's currently being assured. So Jamil, what are the biggest challenges facing companies reporting on their ESG efforts? Samiti, so, these challenges vary depending on the size of the organization, as well as the maturity of the company in relation to the ESG journey. Some of the key challenges we see with companies starting on the ESG journey is really navigating the reporting landscape. There are a number of regulations, frameworks, and standards out there that companies need to be uh, uh, on top of, and, and this is certainly a, a huge challenge. A second critical aspect uh, and challenge is really around the lack of the right skill sets in the teams that are driving ESG performance. One needs to remember that, you know, th this is something that should be embedded in the broader business, and it should not be left to an environmental team or the, the social team to drive this. And to have that collaboration, uh, uh, currently is, is, is definitely a, a challenge for companies. The third challenge we see is the lack of appropriate data, data being robust and, and reliable, as well as complete data. Uh, and, and all of these challenges really stem from the fact that sustainability reporting is not as mature as financial reporting. Financial data is familiar, and the processes uh, around financial data is well managed. You know, if you look at uh, financial reporting, when an invoice comes in, it's captured in the system, there's automated controls, there's you know, checks that happen within the system, and that is then you know, routed for payment. Sustainability reporting is very different, and certainly nowhere close to that maturity. You know, very often we find that uh, sustainability data is, is, is kept in manual spreadsheets, uh, you know, and, and stored in, in someone's computer at at one of the sites, as opposed to there being you know, more robust, streamlined approach, uh, as we've seen in the financial reporting um, uh, aspects. And I think perhaps the, one of the biggest challenges in my mind is who owns this type of reporting. If we look at financial reporting, this is you know, in the accounting team within the helm of the chief financial officer. Very often, when we, you know, out at uh, clients, we note that, you know, there's no clear ownership of sustainability reporting. And in my mind, I would actually challenge the CFO to take on this role. Uh, and, and, and the reason for that is because the CFO has a, a prominent role in the organization and very often has the ear of key committees of the board, be, the, be it the audit committee or social and ethics committee. And to drive change in an organization, you need that level of buy-in from the board uh, and, you know, to filter into the organization. Okay, so I'd like to pick up on the board's role. What would you say is their role with regards to ESG reporting and assurance? Zimiti, so, ultimately, the board, uh, you know, is in essence the custodian of the company for the shareholders. And this means that they have a responsibility to ensure that all material risks are identified assessed and mitigated. And this certainly uh, takes into account ESG information. The board should also challenge management to critically think about strategic alternatives uh, and opportunities with regards to uh, ESG matters. Uh, very often when we talk about ESG, we talk about the risks around ESG uh, matters. However, what about the opportunities that arise as a result of uh, the challenges being faced. And companies that, uh, you know, already think of that will certainly have a first mover advantage as well as, you know, competitive advantage against their, uh, you know, the other companies in the market space. And Jamil, you talked about the CFO's role. What should be top of mind in the CFO's, or four CFO's in the current landscape? The one common thing that comes to mind, uh, if I reflect on all the regulations and standards that are out there, is for companies to 
to demonstrate and articulate a golden thread between their financial reporting and all other reports that they have, be it the integrated report, sustainability report, or the climate change report. And what that means is for companies to, to be able to, to, to articulate the impact that environmental, social, and governance matters have on the financial performance of a company. Uh, so for a CFO to, to uh, be effective, he really needs to have a deep understanding of what does the regulations and standards uh, actually mean for the company. And already start developing policies, processes, and a framework for the company uh, so that when the regulations do become effective and mandated, then they are ready to, to have a smooth, smooth tra tra transition to this. So, Jamil, if you could provide us with a few practical steps that companies can take to prepare for effective reporting and assurance, what, what is it that you would suggest? Smiti, so, effective reporting starts with, firstly, what matters to stakeholders. So I would say that uh, companies that haven't started, the first part is actually to identify what are the most material matters to shareholders and stakeholders. And this may mean stakeholder engagement um, forums where they actually engage with stakeholders to understand what are the most significant items that matter to them. A second aspect is to ensure that companies have robust data. Before they report and have any data assured, they need to be comfortable that the data is robust. Uh, and, and, and to remember also that, you know, it's not as simple as keeping track of invoices. The third critical aspect is to have the right team and skill sets supporting the ESG function. And to also remember that this is a cross-function uh, effort. It's not really uh, meant to sit in one team. It actually should be embedded in the broader organization. So, so that's quite critical in getting traction because that's where the information comes from. Uh, a fourth aspect, I would say, is to identify the gaps in the, in the processes. You, once you understood what's required, to take, take stock as to what's, uh, what's missing and to have a plan as to how you're gonna actually uh, navigate that. And to be uh, transparent with your stakeholders on what your plan is. And perhaps, uh, you know, prior to any assurance, be it limited or reasonable, the company should uh, engage uh, uh, an assurance practitioner to do a readiness review. So to get an independent view on whether you are ready for assurance or not. And the company should lastly remember that all of this doesn't happen overnight. Now, it's a journey and it'll take time, but progress on that journey is critical. Speaking of time, Jamil, thank you very much for giving us your time to actually speak through some of these. We look forward to hearing more of you in the market. Thank you. Thank you.